Hi, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Money and Politics. And before we get started, let me bring up what you hopefully all know, that I'm not a financial advisor or registered broker, and any investments you make are at your own discretion, and you take the risk, and you should get more than one opinion. I'm going to be giving you my opinion on a couple of things today. Uh, first, I know everyone, uh, I haven't made a video for all for Friday or Saturday, so let me catch up. I'm recording this on Sunday. And let's just take a look at where we left off, first of all, on Humble, and then I'm going to go into a couple of things. But when we look at where we are on Humble, this is a one-month chart, and we can see that we started off in February. We were down to about 35 cents or even a little below, shot up to a buck seventy on the 8th of February. And then we had kind of a rough 10 days, a couple up days, but basically we were down to 78 cents on Thursday and finally got an up day before everyone started jumping off the ledge. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't sell out. And we closed out the week at a buck seven. So now where are we going from here? In the short run, I never know, but in the long run, I think we're going up, and I think we will. We have reason to believe, solid reasons to believe, that Humble will be going up. And I, I think that this is one of the most uh, remarkable stocks, as I've mentioned before, that uh, I've had a chance to uh, invest in over the last number of years. And I was uh, working out the numbers. I've said before how I made a lot of money in Cisco, and I, I worked up that that went out to be, it was like a 5,000% increase from where I bought it over a period of five years. So uh, if you put money in today at a dollar, dollar seven, where would it have to go for you to get the, uh, an equivalent return that I got in Cisco? It would have to go to about $50. That would be your 5,000%. So that kind of puts it in perspective what I did with Cisco and what that tells you. It's not to say that, look what I did. My point is, folks, this stuff happens. And other people have made a hell of a lot of money when you look at things like Amazon, uh, Travelocity, just, you know, a whole Apple, on and on and on uh, over the years. And so uh, the one thing that I want you to do is emotionally accept that, yes, you can make money. Let me go to a, um, one of the things I want to talk to you about today uh, and put things in perspective. And, you know, I tell people that if I could have your attention for about an hour and a half, I could probably tell you almost everything you need to know financially. Now, why is that? I kind of equate it sometimes to a computer. Think about what you're doing with your computer you use. And 100% of what you use your computer for is probably about 10% of what your computer can do, right? But that's all you need. You don't, you don't need to do maybe all the different things your computer could do. You just need it to do 100% of what you need it for. Investing is kind of along those lines. It's not that hard. We can get real sophisticated. We can start throwing around jargon. We can start talking about options and trading OEX indexes uh, and all of that. But you don't need to do that. You don't need to even know that to become wealthy, certainly wealthier. And so because this channel was really devised for the beginners, and I, of course, welcome Perry, people who are experienced investors as well. But because it's, uh, you know, I don't want to be talking as if you're all experienced investors. I want, there's so many of you out there that are kind of getting into it, and I applaud that because I know it can be scary when you start up. So anyway, the point is a lot of this is pretty simple. And I just try to, my younger brother, uh, has a great saying, uh, belabor the obvious. And a lot of times, you know, things really aren't obvious to us until someone points it out. So I'm going to point out a couple of things that I want you to focus on today. Number one, 
You have a job and you get a paycheck. We work, ladies and gentlemen, for cash flow. I don't care if you're making $15 an hour or $500 an hour. We work for cash flow. We invest for wealth. Now that's pretty powerful and I want you to think about that because when we are talking about having stocks and growing wealth, it can happen. And when we go back to this chart, if you had bought when this stock on January the 29th was just 35 cents, if you bought 10,000 shares, that would be $3,500 back then. And today, 10,000 shares, it'd be $10,070. That's the thing that, that is uh, powerful. And the other thing I want to, because we're talking about beginners and because I don't want you to just be putting all of your money into Humble, even though I think that, you know, that's a quick, uh, a, real, a real explosive stock that can produce. And I think we're anticipating this uh, monster gains in the future. Certainly has that potential. I would caution you about just playing in the penny stock market because I think the penny stock market has a lot of undue risk. Uh, a friend of mine who is a retired nurse, she sold her home and moved to Florida and was getting ripped off by someone who was advising them. I mean, they were charging her $5,000 a year in fees. And I, uh, we started talking and I was horrified at that. So I said, look, let me, let me help you. The first thing we did, we moved it to Schwab. Now she could have moved to Ameritrade or E-Trade or whatever. I had her move to Schwab. I go, that alone is going to save you five grand because they're not going to charge you for just having an account with them. So I want you, number one, to know enough to not be ripped off by people. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, we had her put a lot of her money in cash, but we invested some of it. And so she just took some investments. And my point here is that you can make some good money by investing just a little bit in some quality companies. And here's what we did with her account. I suggested these stocks and she bought five shares of Adobe in March of 2018. So about three years ago, she invested uh, five shares. She bought at $227, which cost her $1,136. But now the share price of Adobe is $479. Those five shares are now worth $2,400 for a profit of $1,260, 110% gain in about three years. Facebook, five shares that she bought at $180. Those shares are now $261. So she had a profit of $405, 45% basically since October of 2017. And actually that was higher, but uh, Facebook came down recently a bit and TTD, which is Trade Desk. And this really goes to show you this one, um, how if you, you know, you get some of these companies that are really fast growers, she bought five shares in December of 2019. So just about 13 months ago, 14 months ago, bought those at $245 a share, investing $1,225. Now it is at $903 a share, uh, so she has a profit on that $1,225. She has a profit of $3,290 for 268% gain. And if you look at the total then, the total is she invested $3,263. I rounded up a little bit on some of these. And that's now worth $8,224 a profit of 4,900, so almost $5,000 profit on $3,300 or so invested. Uh, that's 152%, and most of that was done in the last 13 months. So there you are, that's three different great companies uh, where you got some diversification, and you also had some good profits. Now. People are going to go, well, that's not, a, you know, a million dollars like I'm looking to get in 
in um, humble, but folks, you know, something like humble comes along once in a while. And the thing that really makes humble unique is the fact that you get to buy it at such low prices and the fact that you get to buy so many shares. So uh, the reality is when you go to look for other investments, they're going to be more like we had here where, you know, look at some good and growing companies. And there's a variety of ways to um, look at that. And one of the ways is you go on, and I, I kind of touched on this before, but you go on Yahoo and you can look at like, let's say fast growing uh, ETFs or fast growing mutual funds. What are some of the best mutual funds? And Yahoo will show you, Yahoo Finance will show you what are the holdings inside that mutual fund. That's in fact how I found TTD. It was in one of the mutual funds that was a better growing mutual fund. But while the mutual fund is well, it's diversified. Yeah, it was diversified, but the reason that mutual fund was growing because it had TTD in it. And so instead of buying the mutual fund and paying 3% fees and getting all those other stocks in there that weren't growing as much, we just went out and bought TTD and that produced a profit of 268% for her so far in about 14 months. Uh, at $900 a share, $903 a share, that's the kind of thing, who knows? You know, they could split that two for one, five for one, they could even split that 10 for one and you'd still have a, a $90 share price. So I don't wanna be talking to you as we talk just about Humble, especially on here on a Saturday. We're gonna be obviously keeping track of Humble and Forwardly, and those are two of our all-time favorite stocks. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be covering those. But I really wanted to bring, uh, and I'm going to end with the uh, same thing I kind of I began, I, that, you know, let's keep in mind that you build wealth by investing in stocks, and stocks are just magnificent to invest in. Uh, because when I had a business, every day I opened my doors, it cost me, and this is, you know, 30 years ago almost, it cost me $400 when you added up the rent, the utilities, uh, you know, all the incendiary cost, parking, et cetera, et cetera, and you broke that all, all down. It, uh, the, the labor, uh, just whatever, it cost me $400 every day I opened the door. And so I had to do so much business just to clear those fixed costs. It was like feeding a monster. Uh, and you hoped you made money at the end. And there were many days, you know, you didn't make money. You didn't have enough business to produce, cover your labor costs that day or cover whatever your, your fixed costs. So when you have stocks, there's no phone. There's no utilities. There's no place you got to rent. There's no employees you got to hire. You're buying businesses and they have all of those costs. They have all of those employees. They have to go through all the hiring and all the headaches and reinvest in things. Uh, all we gotta do is pick the winners. And you know what? If you're running a business and it's not doing so well and you try to sell it, that can be a hard sell or it'll take you months. And of course you may have to pay a commission to some broker. When you wanna get out of a bad business in the stock market, you do it like that, man. You just click, click, and you're out. So investing in the market, I can tell you from someone who's been an entrepreneur and run my own businesses, is so much easier to build wealth. So when you're out there working, don't forget, we work for cash flow, we invest for wealth. So go out, be good investors, do your due diligence, build your wealth. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks as always. Give me a thumbs up if you felt this was useful and give me your comments. I really love going through there. The other night I was up uh, spending about an hour going through just answering. In fact, I'm gonna be doing a show. I think at some point I wanna pick out some of the interesting comments and respond to them on camera. Uh, in any event, thanks so much for joining me again today. Let's hope that we have a profitable week ahead. Stay warm, stay healthy and We'll see you soon.